Welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, mainstream media figures are accusing conservative media of misleading their audiences about President Biden's physical fitness and frail appearance. MSNBC's Nicole Wallace slammed the New York Post and other conservative outlets for promoting cheap fakes or videos in which Biden seemingly wanders off or becomes confused. Is that fair? Let's watch. There's a growing and insidious trend in right-wing media, broadcast, print, and social media. It is to take highly misleading and selectively edited videos of President Biden directly from Republican National Committee social media accounts and then use those videos to spread messages virally to cast doubt on President Biden's fitness for office. Here is this headline from the New York Post, quote, Biden appears to freeze up, has to be led off stage by Obama at Megabucks LA fundraiser. The full video posted by Biden finance chair on Twitter shows something entirely different. Biden reacting to applause and then walking off stage with former President Obama. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said the president's critics are guilty of promoting misinformation. Let's watch. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they are done in bad faith. Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right wing, uh, the right wing critics of the president have a credibility problem uh, because of the fact checkers have repeatedly caught them pushing misinformation, disinformation. I think that it tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes, uh, these manipulated videos. Uh, and it is, again, done in bad faith. Ah. That's, that's all they've got. The Republican accounts circulating many of the clips responded, claiming the videos are unedited and promised to keep a posting lie, them. A lie. And also, lie. just if, if something all, is unedited, it's, it's really one angle, lies. not showing the whole story. How about this, Al? They, they lie about their lies, which, of course, you would expect liars to lie about their lies. Oh, I mean, we're talking about but, Trump's. But, but they're they're lying about. They're cheap fake. They're not, the they're Washington not bad. Post. By the way, I, I just I got to say this one more time. They're only helping Joe Biden. They're only lowering expectations. They do it before every State of the Union address. And then afterwards, they're so freaked out that Biden did well. They say he must have been on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let, let's set aside Joe Scarborough for a minute there. What Karine Jean-Pierre said was just not true. She said that they were deep fakes and that they were manipulated. They were neither of those things. Um, so we're talking about the one where he was in the middle and he wasn't dancing like the rest, um, the one where he appeared to wander off when he was with the European leaders, and then the one of him with Obama at that fundraiser. Um, look, I think you can absolutely push back and say that the, particularly the one with the European leaders, there was one version of the video that it was cropped, so you didn't see that he was like looking at some at somebody off of camera. I think totally fair to say, you know, you should use the video or see the video with that, maybe if that changes how you perceive it. But it, is, it's not, it was not manipulated. It's not made up. It's not enhanced in some way. And to start saying that any video where Joe Biden, an obviously aging and frail man who the American people fully understand, is um, is showing his age to say that any video where he doesn't look like totally all there or totally with it is a is a deep fake is it's just not true. That's misinformation. Right. And the reason they're not even using the term deep fake is because they know that these are not an example of an AI produced video or image. They're saying cheap fake, which is just code for video we don't like yeah. or video that shows Biden doing things that we can't defend otherwise. And what is amazing about this defense as well is when you see the side by side videos of the Obama situation at that LA fundraiser, we have the RNC's version, which shows Sure, they have political motivations here. Their version is a zoomed in version, so you can actually see the moment that Joe Biden freezes. I counted the seconds. It was five full seconds before Obama grabs him by the wrist and then puts his arm around his shoulders to usher him off stage. And then the defense video that was posted by members of the Biden campaign conveniently cuts about 10 different times and zooms out at the exact <laughs> moment that uh, Obama reaches in to grab Joe Biden's wrist. So 
it's like, okay, who was the one sharing manipulated videos right, here? Exactly. If you're going to make sure that you cut out at the exact moment where the controversy supposedly is. Yeah, I, I think it's always, you know, I learned from, uh, from what happened to the Covington kids at the Lincoln Memorial, you should never make confident assertions based on a small uh, clip video clip videos can be misleading even when they're they're not manipulated at all so I fully appreciate you know wanting greater context or wanting to see a full video clip rather than some selection but yeah like you said with the Obama I mean Obama did kind of lead him off stage. Um, he, he did look rather disoriented. I think the European one, he didn't look as disoriented when you saw what he was pointing at. He still kind of did move away from the rest of them. Then the one where he just doesn't dance, I, I think was totally defensible. If I was Joe Biden in that situation, I also would not dance. Um, <laughs> yeah, for good with, reason, like, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> my, my moves would not look very impressive next to Kamala Harris and uh, her husband and all the rest of them. Uh, maybe it was the culturally sensitive thing to do was to not dance. <laughs> but look, that's like up to the American people to decide what they think about these things not for the White House or commentators to spin. And you know, Scarborough there's like, it's a lie, it's a lie. It's like, no, it's not, it's not it's, 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 it's not manipulated. It's not, they want you to think it's like AI generated. The, right. the reason we're now gonna have to start like wholesale distrusting images and videos online um, because the technology is gonna get really good, uh, you know, supposedly, or some people expect so far, it's not so good that you can't um, tell the, the the actual fake stuff for the most part. Right. I was debating with a Democrat about this just uh, yesterday, and their defense was that, well, Trump called his White House doctor Ronnie Jackson, who's now a congressman, Ronnie Johnson. Right. And it's like, okay, we all know the difference when you talk for a living, you occasionally mix up somebody's name. Uh, I've done it on this show where we yep. had to go back and do a little correction because I threw the wrong name out there. We know that that's obviously different than saying that your son came home in a flag-draped coffin, that you got involved in the civil rights movement when you were 15 years old, um, forgetting when your son actually died, and then lying and saying that Robert Herr brought it up first in the interview when the transcript shows otherwise. Uh, what, what other lies? Forgetting is when, uh, forgetting who the negotiations are between in in Gaza. Remember, he did that press conference where he was asked if there's a, a ceasefire deal or hostage exchange deal being worked up, uh, being worked out, and the crowd had to give him Hamas. Right. Um, which is like this is a very sensitive national security issue. And then mixing up the Egyptian and Mexican yeah. presidents. Um, he, he tried to signal to a congresswoman who had passed away from a car accident a month prior to yeah. an event that he was at. I mean, it's just such an obviously different thing. And, and there's now a new video going around that is purporting to show the same thing happening to Trump that happened to Biden on stage, where there's a short two second video that shows Trump grabbing his son Don Jr.'s hand off of the stage. Mm -hmm. And the caption from left wing activists is, look, who else has to be led around oh. on stage? <laughs> <laughs> and exactly to your point, like it does matter sometimes if these things are shortened because when you expand the video out, he literally reaches down for a second to just like shake his son's hand and then keeps walking. Yeah. So it's just so hilarious that there's so much projection of, well, we're now going to do the exact thing that we're accusing you of in order to, I guess, make our point or to further dilute it. Who I mean, knows? You know, Trump's no spring chicken either, which is why he doesn't want it to just be an age question and and. I've watched him specifically um, when asked about Biden's age, you know, try to direct away from that to it. What's about the the mental and physical competence? And to be fair, I think he's right. Differently, yeah. I don't think it's about the numerical age. Everybody ages at a different rate. I yeah. mean, I know plenty of eighty-year-olds who are not. Uh, as decrepit as Joe Biden, sure. but age is sort of a stand-in, I think, for these other issues that we see with the president. Things that, like again, all Americans see that you know ma a majority of polled Democrats were very concerned about Joe Biden running for re-election based on the age question. I mean, the age question is the main thing for a lot of Americans. I think it's something very difficult for um, uh, mainstream media and Democratic um, officials to kind of understand that if you just go talk to your relatives out in, you know, mine are in the Midwest, you know, out in normal America, um, people who are not closely like following e the ins and outs of every political development, um, you know, they know that gas prices are up, food prices are up, housing prices are up. Um, you know, maybe they hear about immigration problems if they watch some news. The other thing is Joe Biden's age. They do see him on TV from time to time and they're like, wow, is he gonna make it through another four years? And, um, and I, I think, and, and that issue is just going to keep getting worse because there's no, 
There's no going back. There's no magically curing it. Um, I think there will be a lot riding on this upcoming uh, debate performance where he, you know, he could theoretically kind of uh, close off some of that criticism if he does a really good job, but uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I, I get people who call into the radio all the time and they say, you know, I take care of elderly family members and some of the things that I saw earlier in their decline are, are very similar to what I'm seeing now in these videos of Joe Biden. And that's a real experience for people that you can't explain or cheap fake your way out yeah. of. Um, but one last point on this, there was an Echelon Insights poll that came out recently. It actually directly compared people's concern for Biden's age to their concern for Trump's felony conviction. And the majority said that they were more concerned about Biden's age. So, I mean, this is obviously something that they're very desperately going to try to spin. Mm. More free media right after this.